Okay, foundation of pre-calculus 10, let's get after it. Here we go, we are looking at parallel and perpendicular lines, and I believe we touch on vertical and horizontal here briefly as well. Again, this is just a short, the full lesson is available in the uh, foundation of pre-cal 10 talks concepts playlist. So let's look at parallel lines. Now just look at those two lines. Are you looking? It's pretty obvious that they're never going to touch, they're parallel. But there's something really interesting well, not really interesting, but there's something interesting about their slopes. So let's map their slopes here. If we pick out a couple points on each line here. Here I know those are definite intersections. Well, I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the slope of the blue line is 5 over 5, so the slope of the blue line is 1. Well, let's look at the red line. Here's an intersection, and here's an intersection. Well, I have 2 over 2 in this case. So the slope of the red line is 1. So in order to be a parallel line, you have to have identical slopes. Your slopes need to be exactly the same. Because that way they're traveling in the same direction at the same rate. They're never going to touch. That is what makes them parallel. So how do we determine whether or not two lines are parallel without graphing them? Well, we just look at their equations. And we convert them into slope-intercept form. Because then the slope will be staring at us. So in this case, to get the slope-intercept form, remember we want y equals mx plus b. So we want y all by itself. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And that's going to give me 2y equals negative x plus 6. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2. Now what that's going to do is that's going to give me y equals negative 1 over 2x plus 3. So I don't even really care about the plus 3. All that matters from this is that I know that my slope is negative a half. The x isn't part of the slope. It's just a number of front. Remember, so negative a half is my slope. Now, we just need to convert the second one as well. So again, I need y alone. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. And now I have y equals 2x plus 3. Well, I'm in slope-intercept form, and that's my slope. Pretty obvious that those numbers are not the same. So those numbers are not parallel. Those numbers are something special, but I'm not going to get to that until a couple slides down the road. But they're definitely not parallel. Let's look at another example. Well, again, I need y equals mx plus b. So subtract 3x from both sides. And now you have negative y equals negative 3x plus 3. I don't want negative y though, so I need to multiply everything by negative 1. Changes to signs essentially. And y equals 3x minus 3. So I have a slope of 3. That's what I'm looking for. So let's look at this one. Well, I'm going to add 6x to both sides. And now I have 2y equals 6x plus 12. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. And I have y equals 3x plus 6. And would you look at that? 3 is 3. So those two lines are parallel to each other. And if you look, they have different y-intercepts, which means they're definitely a different line. If they had the same y-intercept, they'd be the exact same line. So in this case, we know that they're different, and they are, in fact, parallel. So what about perpendicular lines? Okay, perpendicular lines are the lines you see there, the red and the blue. And the very important detail of a perpendicular line is they create a 90 degree angle at their intersection. Okay, that is what makes two things perpendicular. Otherwise, sure, they cross, but they're not perpendicular. Perpendicular creates a 90 degree angle. So let's look at the slopes of these lines. So the blue one, there's a point and there's a point. It has a slope of negative two, and positive 4. So it has a slope of negative 1 half. And if we look at the red line, this has a slope of 2 over 1, which is just 2. So the important thing between these, if you look, so we have negative a half and we have 2 over 1. So when you have a number like that, forget the negative here for a second, okay, 1 half and 2 over 1 are what we call reciprocals. It's the numerator and the denominator have switched places. If it helps you remember, you can say reciprocal. That's not a real word, but you flip the fraction. And then the other detail that's important, and it's in our graph, is that one of them is negative. Same case, so they are what we call negative reciprocals 
of one another. Why is it negative important? Because look at those two lines, right? The red line, this is a positive slope. So in order to intersect at a 90 degree angle, the other line has to have a negative slope because it has to be traveling in the opposite negative direction. So we're looking for two negative reciprocals. So let's look at this example. Well, this first question, we don't have to do anything too. The slope is staring us in the face. Here it is. We have a slope of negative two over three. So before we do the algebra on the next question, what is the negative reciprocal to that? Well, since that is already negative, our um, reciprocal is three over two, and the negative version of that is positive because a negative times a negative is positive. So we're looking for this. This is the slope we need. So let's do the algebra. I'm going to add three X to both sides. And that's a good start because you can see we have 2y equals 3x plus 6. So we have this number. And then we're going to divide everything by 2. Oh, man, success. Look at that. y equals 3 over 2x plus 3. So we have it. 3 over 2 is the negative reciprocal of 2 over 3. So we say, yes, indeed, these lines are perpendicular. So let's look at this one. Well, in this case, we need to do a bit of work. So minus 4x from both sides, minus 4x. Remember, we're trying to get to y equals mx plus b. And we end up with negative 5y equals negative 4x plus 10. And then divide everything by negative 5, divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5. So we end up with y equals, negative cancels the negative, 4 over 5x. And then a positive divided by negative gives us negative 2. And again, the y-intercept actually doesn't matter. because All we're concerned with is our slope. So we have a slope of five, 4 over 5. What are we looking for then? We're looking for negative 5 over 4. That would be the negative reciprocal. So let's look at this one. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. And I get 10y equals negative 8x plus 20. And then divide everything by 10. And what do I get? I get y equals negative 8 over 10x plus 2. Well, 8 over 10 is definitely not 5 over 4, but 8 over 10 is 4 over 5 when we simplify. And 4 over 5 is not 5 over 4. So it's also not 4 over 5. So it's not the same, and it's not the negative reciprocal. So we just say, yeah, these are neither. They're just two lines that happen to cross, but they're not perpendicular or parallel. So you got, if, if they're parallel, great. If they're perpendicular, great. But if they don't satisfy those two separate conditions, then we just say they're neither. They're just two lines. Good for them. They exist. They cross, but not at a 90 degree angle. So they're just not special. Okay, so that is section 3.2 in uh, pre-cal 10. Uh, great work. I know that this is uh, incredibly enthralling stuff, so keep it up.